think my my goal for either this year or the next place we move into is to get a decent background for filming because this is just not it. Anyway, hi, hello. My name is Michaela. I'm a PhD student at the University of Tübingen, but I'm originally from New Zealand and yes, I have a Kiwi accent. Somebody commented that the other day. It is very, it is very Kiwi. I am very, very New Zealander, but my husband and I moved from New Zealand to Germany to do my PhD here in Tübingen and so Basically, we just document our lives in Germany, what we do, studies, life, gymming, cooking, like everything basically. And yeah, welcome to my channel. At the beginning of this year, I filmed a how I want to structure this year video with my digital planner and my new budget that I was going to be following for the year because I realized last year that I felt so out of control and so chaotic last year because I didn't really know what was going on and I had very little structure to my work week and we were traveling a lot which was really cool but it also came with the caveat of just having very little structure in our entire lives and so my goal for this year was to properly document what our weeks are looking like and actually having a proper budget and knowing where exactly our money is going rather than just guessing and coming up with a proper planner that I'm following so that I can stay on top of stuff and not just forget stuff because it's not happening having a proper habit tracker like all of this stuff but also having monthly reviews at the beginning and the end of each month and so that is what I've been doing for the month of January and it is now the 4th of February so I'm a little bit behind on this but I have done my planning for February and I thought that I'd go through and we could look at it together because my budget is filled out completely my monthly planner has been filled out and I'm really excited to have a look back over January and see what it's like have some transparency so that I can go into February with a bit more just knowledge and awareness that's all I'm doing this for I'm not doing this because I'm very strict or anything there are a few things that in my budget I'm trying to do like I'm trying to pay off some more of my student loan this year and I'm trying to invest some more this year and so I'd set up a investing account and I'm trying to save for some big travel stuff that we're wanting to do in the next year and a half and so I'm trying to just be a bit more aware so that I know where my money's going and so that I know what I'm able to do with stuff. So yes, anyway, welcome to the video. I hope that this is helpful for you. And again, like I did with the, the video at the beginning of the year, I will link everything that I'm using down at the bottom in case it's something that you also want to use. But I'm hoping that this is going to be stuff that I can stick with in the coming years and just set up a really good routine for me. So we'll start with the monthly planner because I feel like that is probably the the easiest place to start. I'm going to have it down here. So if I'm looking down, obviously it's going to be on the screen for you. But if I'm looking down, that is what I'm looking down at. Okay, so let us start with January. In my January plan with me, I mapped out the whole month. The one layout that it has is a big calendar layout and I put that there for all of the dates that I needed to know in terms of YouTube videos coming out, travel, university deadlines, birthdays, like all the normal stuff that you need to know. And I keep coming back to this page purely because there's a very easy click link back to that but also because if you're coming back to any of the days it's easy to click to. So on the 4th of January for example I can just click back to that. So it's super easy. And then the next one was an overview and I didn't want to have too much pressure in January this year because I often start off with like I'm going to go to the gym three times a week and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I often don't get it done so <laughs> I thought I'd have a bit of a slower January try and just have some good balance in the work week and stuff like that and yeah this is how it ended up as you can see I didn't have much on my monthly to-do list and I didn't have any action steps for my goal this month. And so not that much got done, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I definitely got my two out of three priorities done where I had to create a timeline for the year for my PhD. And I wanted to draft one section of my chapter. 
and that is done i didn't finish the third one but i got so close i'm literally on the last one so that'll be done early february but it's fine that it didn't get done in january because it was there and i was working towards it we did go on a trip which i put in the monthly to-do list because i just wanted to fill it out basically so that got done very quickly but i noticed that in january i was feeling a bit overwhelmed with some things and one of the things that didn't get done so much was life admin so in terms of sorting through mail paperwork we have to return luke's barn card that they accidentally sent a second one which we're obviously not going to pay for two barn cards and so i need to send that back and then we need to sort out our radio tax thing important dates i didn't tick off the last one but i did make sure that i had all of those in there and my goal for the month was to set up a good weekly routine that I can maintain. And I did not do that <laughs> at all. I did set up for myself a morning. And so I found last year I got really frustrated when I wasn't starting work at a time when I planned to start it. And then feeling like my day was already behind. And so I have shifted my mindset a little bit this year to being I just want to be starting at 10 my university work or my job in New Zealand. So I can do language learning before, I can go to the gym before, I can do stuff that I'd normally have in my morning routine as long as I'm starting work at 10. And I found that that's been really helpful. But as you'll see when we get to February, I actually wanna set up a good morning routine that is realistic and that isn't too busy. So that is my goal, but I'm glad with what I did do, which was kind of changing my expectations for the, how the morning's gonna go. And then in terms of my habit tracker, as you can see, um, I did not do very well with my January habits. My goal was to track going to the gym, reading the Bible, stretching, reading nonfiction books, and language learning. And I definitely did the language learning. That was probably the easiest one to do, partially because I'm living in a country where it's not my native language and so yes I'm learning by reading books in another language and by doing it on Duolingo but at the same time if I spend my whole day speaking German in which case for me that means speaking and asking people hey what's the word for this if I spend my whole day doing that I'm going to consider that language learning for the day because I am I'm, I'm learning it and I'm using it and so I ticked it off as that as well. So I don't think I'm going to have this goal for next month just because it felt a little bit redundant and it was something that was so easy to maintain that it didn't feel like it was a habit that I needed to track. But the other ones I didn't fulfill as well as I'd hoped. And that's the point of this is that I didn't realize how much I wasn't doing it until I started tracking it and realizing like, oh, I'm actually not putting time into this stuff. And so I have set up some habits for next year that or like some ideas for habits that I want to have for next month and it is definitely in reaction to having seen this so that is January at the end it's really cool having like a reflection thing where it goes through what are your achievements for this year so like I started running again this year now that I've got an inhaler and it's so cool being able to run without having asthma attacks that's a pretty big thing and also that I submitted my piece of writing on time and then it's just things that you're grateful for, thoughts on the month, difficulties, challenges, priorities, what worked well, what didn't work well, and so forth, like you can see it on the screen. But it was really cool to have these section breakdowns and feel like actually thinking about how the month went. And I am trying to be so much more aware this year. That's one thing that I want to be is like just not run away from my emotions and my feelings and everything. But be present in them and be aware of what's going on and so it's really cool to think about like oh i didn't rate each category but reflecting on each categories of like work family friends health sport and self and feeling like wow well, have i actually improved on these things this year or what have i not done as much or not spent as much time on this month and so yeah i was really i really enjoyed doing that reflection i have to say and it really helped me feel a lot more informed for February. So I haven't filled out that much of February yet because I don't really know what's going on. I need to fill in the birthdays, but I definitely need to to fill this in. But in terms of the overview, I haven't filled out my habit tracker. It's the fourth and I haven't filled it out for the third and the fourth yet. But I have got priorities where I want to finish two 
hardcover books so basically not ebooks i don't think it's called hardcover physical books maybe i need to write that in but i want to finish two physical books because i dnf'd a lot of books in january and i just want to actually read good books and finish them so my plan is to try and finish two hardcover books actually complete life admin so that was in response to what happened last month and stick to my commitments so if I say that I'm going to go somewhere in the evening, actually going to it in the evening and not copping out because I am not having such a good day or because I feel like I haven't done enough work. It's something that I did quite well in January, but I didn't have that many plans. And I know that as the year gets busier and busier, I definitely want to make sure that I'm sticking to those things. Again, I don't have much on my monthly to-do list, but I'm hoping as the month goes progresses as the month progresses I can add more to it because at the moment it's just very broad stuff at the moment so I want to rewrite a contact segment which is everything that I just filmed so if you want to go look at me writing a big section in my PhD I filmed the whole process but I need to rewrite it unfortunately not unfortunately it's a good thing but I do need to rewrite that and I want to analyze all of the examples that I have that I'm going to be using in a chapter that I'm going to be writing. And then important dates, there's obviously Valentine's Day, Lent is starting, birthdays and so forth. And goal for the, the month is in reaction to last one which is developing a good maintainable morning routine. And I've actually written down some action steps in terms of like it's very basic stuff but it's think about what I actually want out of my mornings and planning it to not fit too much in. So really that's more notes to myself when I'm trying to set up the goal for the month. And then the habits that I want to focus on this month are 7,500 steps a day because I do want to just be walking more. Obviously I'm cycling a lot of places but I find that I just feel less cramped if I move. And so I'm trying to have my 7,500 steps a day, Bible reading, exercise, non-fiction reading and stretch. So it's very similar to last month, but slightly different. And yeah, that's pretty much it for February. I am very excited to go through and see how this is working, but currently I'm still really loving this planner. It's really working out for me. And those are kind of my goals for February. We'll revisit them again in a month, but if we turn to the budget now, now I'm facing this way. So this is my January dashboard. Basically, when you're going through the transactions segment, you put in all of your transactions and everything. And depending on the month that it goes into, so like in here, it's got a few expenses because I've logged the ones that have happened in the last four days. But in terms of January, it goes through everything. So let's let's have a look at it. My income breakdown is primarily from my scholarship, which makes sense. But I also get money from my New Zealand job. And then a few things from Side Hustle and gifts. Gifts, I think that was just from um, like family giving us stuff. The Side Hustle this month. I'm hoping one day it will become YouTube. But at the moment, it's just cash back that I get from uh, one of my banks that I use. Gives you cash back depending on how much money. It's basically interest, but they call it cash back. And so that's one thing that I got. And my paychecks. Expenses. This is the one that I'm most interested in, so we'll do that in a second. So I put 308 euros into my student loan. Unfortunately, you can't do dual currencies in this budget, which is fine. Like, I can understand it. So I just converted it to euros. But I put 550 New Zealand dollars into my student loan. And what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm actually probably going to put it in a an investment account thing so that I can... So I'm basically treating it like an investment because as Luke mentioned to me, my student loan is interest free as long as I'm studying. And so there's no point putting money into it straight into my student loan as I'm going throughout the year, the years, because it's just directly going off into student loan and obviously it's not gaining interest or anything, the money that I'm using whereas if I can put it into an investments account it's going to like we use quite high risk investments account and so generally it's quite high payback which is quite cool and so he suggested putting it in there and then only pulling it out 
when I finish my PhD so that in the end it's more money. I don't know if that makes sense because I don't know any of the correct terms for investing, but that's the plan. So I haven't actually put it into my student loan, but we've set up an investments account that that money is going into. And yeah, hopefully it should get me some good, uh, some good interest. And then savings, I need to figure out how I'm going to do this. Maybe I do a calculation at the end of each month, but my savings were like my travel fund and everything. And there were a few things this month, like we bought flights for a trip that's happening in August. And I bought tickets for Luke's birthday trip that we're doing in March. And so that technically came out of the travel fund, but then I put a big number into the travel fund. And so I need to figure out how to properly display this whether at the end of the month I calculate how much actually went into the travel fund and how much came out and figure out the remaining balance and put that as that went into savings. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I put in about 1,490 euros into savings, which is insane. That's a lot of money. I'm very, uh, very happy with that, I have to say. And then the expenses. This is going to be the biggest thing. So groceries did i really only spend 248 euros on groceries i mean i know that luke put money into groceries as well but i thought i spent a lot more money on groceries so that's really quite cool to uh have that obviously we ate out a lot more this month because we were traveling and we had a few events and so we've got 140 euros in eating out 99 euros in university meals that's kind of painful i definitely want to be cutting down on that in February but it should be easier now that the semester finishes like next week and so hopefully that will come down and same with the eating out travel obviously we went to Brussels so 430 is not bad considering and then that's also including tickets that we've bought for flights and some flights not all of them came out of this account but flights and the tickets for Luke's birthday. I have to be careful. I can't say it because he's in the other room and he's going to hear otherwise. And I'm trying to keep it as much of a secret as possible so he has no idea what's happening. We do have birthday accounts. And so we bought birthday gifts this year, this month. And educational costs. So that'll be my university books. 92 euros is not bad. I'm like, I'm quite proud of that because I did buy, I did have to buy like three books this month and that's not going to come out every single month which is nice health and meds obviously when you go to the pharmacy and so forth beauty 47 it's going to be much more next month already because 60 euros i got my hair cut the other day <laughs> i get my hair cut like once every year and a half because i really struggle to justify it but it's something that maybe i'll be doing a bit more this year i'm thinking maybe once every six months or something but 47 euros i dyed my hair and I think it was just picking up stuff from like the drugstore. Clothing, we didn't buy any clothing in January, which is very nice. Household is more, I actually don't know what I put under household. I'm really curious about this household. Oh yeah, Luke had to get his bike repaired, which I paid for. Topping up the ID card for doing our washing machine. Other household stuff, it's gonna be ID card again. Oh, buying stuff for the house, yes. I vlogged that redoing our apartment so you can go check out that video if you want another one's going to be coming soon so household yeah it's just general stuff for the household transportation social events so forth i'm actually really happy with it i thought it was going to be a lot more but it was only 1497 so that is good amount left to spend is 1946 but it isn't actually because i only get one paycheck every three months and so this income is what it is here but it's got to co cover me through until i get the next paycheck in april so yeah i'm curious to see what february and march look like but i am actually really proud of this budget i feel like it's really helping me know where money's going and like i honestly thought we were putting more money into groceries but we haven't which is nice and it is interesting to see how much is going into my university stuff but obviously that's going to change when the semester isn't on anymore. So yeah, I don't know if that was at all interesting, but it's just really nice for me to see that kind of stuff and see like as a student where the money is going. I definitely think there's places that we could be cutting costs, but that's just gonna 
happen once we've had a couple of months and we can look through and be like was this actually something we spent a lot of money on or is this something that it was like a one-off thing so yeah thank you for watching i hope that you enjoyed this video and that it might have inspired you potentially to be a bit more organized when it comes to this kind of stuff i'm just i'm trying to be a good saver and a good like i don't spend that much money it's more just knowing where the money's going so you can know what you can use it for and like i put a lot more money into savings in january because i was aware of it and i just didn't think that we could save but we can save as long as we use our money wisely so yeah anyway <laughs> i hope that you enjoyed that i am going to do another monthly recap in a month obviously because it's a monthly recap so stick around if you found this cool and yeah i'll see you with another video very soon Thank you.